Well, hello everybody. Good afternoon, Gary Beck from Maximum Wellbeing. Live time again, and it's 1.30 on a Monday afternoon here in the Sunshine Coast. And there's, um, there's always interesting information comes through by email, by uh, Facebook, by different groups and bits and pieces. And some information I've been watching lately just highlighted the need to perhaps clarify for some of you uh, the importance of supplementing with folic acid and also to a degree just clarifying the different forms that are available and what really may be the best for you because there is a lot of information and unfortunately with that information there's a lot of misinformation so it can be uh, uh, not difficult to become really confused and deciphering what's being talked about out there. So good old folic acid, it, it, most of us have heard of it, most of us are aware that it is an important nutrient for pregnancy and, and preconception as well. And the areas that it's known to be beneficial, in particular the, the spina bifida type things and neuro true defects. So this is where if there is not adequate folic acid in the pregnant woman, a variety of congenital malformations can actually result. And of course, nobody wants that. And when it's something as simple as making sure your folic acid levels are maintained, then of course, it's a, it's a no-brainer that it, it's definitely something that we should all be considering and probably doing. So there are other benefits of supplementing with folic acid. And these include benefits for the developing fetus, but also for uh, the young child as they develop, and also for the mother. So we know that by maintaining levels of folic acid, we're not only reducing the level, the incidence of neurotube defects, but we're also reducing the risk of postnatal depression for the mother. We're also reducing the risk of potentially some of the childhood cancers that are unfortunately out there. And um, even the general uh, cognitive uh, development of the child for the first decade or so of their life is important as well. So, yeah, really key, really necessary, and definitely encourage you to get on and, and consider using some form of folic acid. Most of the prenatal products on the market, of course, will have folic acid in it. It's a pretty key one, and it's been known about for many years. But there is some... Um, a lot of the confusion has sort of come about from the understanding with some of our genetic predispositions. And there is information that uh, talks about the genetic um, variant MTHFR. So this is where there's a difficulty with the process of methylation in our body. And as a result, the suggestion is methylfolate really should be used by these people. And while that may be true in some instances, we have to be a little bit careful. See, the body is really clever, and the body has a whole host of different checks and balances in place, the hormones, neurotransmitters, enzymes, and so forth. And when we're supplementing with a methylfolate instead of folic acid, essentially what we're doing is we're bypassing some of these little checks and balances. Now, when it's deficient and it's needed, then that may be quite appropriate. But without that check and balance process in place, and it's in place when we're supplementing with folic acid, then there is the potential with methylfolate to actually pre create perhaps an imbalance. And of course, nobody wants that or needs that. So um, what the science does tell us uh, is that Folic acid is still perfectly fine to be used by those with the MTHFA SNP. So it still works, it still gets in, it still reduces the risk of neural tube defects, and uh, there are none of the other concerns that some people talk about. We also know that the folic acid, for those with the MTHFA or not, has the benefit of reducing all the, all the issues and 
creating the benefits that are talked about. The only product that really has significant science backing it up uh, over many, many years is folic acid. And what we need to understand too is that folic, the folate that occurs naturally in our food, and another name for folate is B9, vitamin B9, it actually has a, a couple of hundred at least different types that occur naturally, so occur in nature in our food. Now, of course, getting the B9, getting the folate from our food is the primary source, and we can do that by making sure we're getting rid of the processed junk and adding you know, good food into our day. But the need for supplementing is still there. Most of us have some stress in our lives. Most of us don't get to eat perfectly all the time. Most of us take shortcuts, um, and that's just human nature in this particular lifestyle that we're living. And there are lots of areas that perhaps our lifestyle is compromised. So hence the supplementation, a really smart thing to do for pretty much all of us. Uh, the, the science really doesn't back a lot of the hype around methylfolate. As I say, there are areas that uh, it is appropriate, but the benefits are still gained from good old-fashioned folic acid. Uh, the yeah the, the long term research on the safety of methylfolate just isn't there, so it's one of those things where do we go with what we know and what is proven, or do we take a gamble and try something flashier and smarter and and hopefully the long term results are as good or better. Um, so the jury is out there. So why why take the risk? Um, some of the study that's been done about folic acid and folate over the years and talks about you shouldn't take too much and it might knock out B12 and cause problems. Those studies have actually been looked at over time and it's found that they were actually flawed and that just doesn't hold water. So that we didn't need to be concerned about taking more than what's suggested. Um, more so, we need to really be mindful of that lower level. We need to get it up. And uh, hence the good quality supplements that you'll have access to will have the right amounts. Um, and if you feel you could take more or want to take more, then there's really no risk in that at all. And the science telling us that if you take too much folic acid, it's going to uh, reduce the, the available B12, vitamin B12. Folic acid and B12 work together to create really healthy blood cells. Um, yeah, that science has been shown to be flawed. So no problem, get your supplement, take it every day and be happy that you're doing the right thing and getting your body supported in the right way. And remembering, you know, those are the areas that, are, that you're gonna have protection. It's protection both the developing fetus and the mother and even it's protecting the child regards its uh, formative years for the first decade at least. So. We have a range of supplements that are available to us. We have a range of the high quality practitioner products that um, we prefer to use, and they all have a wonderful range of nutrients, including the folic acid. So if you need help on deciding which is best for you, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can message us directly, and I'll be more than happy to respond to your questions. So, yeah, folic acid. That's really about all I wanted to say today. The, um, yeah, there are plenty of products out there. We've got access to them all. There'll be one that will be right for you, and it's just a matter of identifying that. So feel free to make contact, and uh, we'll get you onto the right product for you to make sure that you have the right outcome for you. Thanks for listening today, folks, and I'll speak to you again real soon. Bye for now.